Hey, super stoked to watercolor with graphic tints by Derwin today. Never tried them before. Super excited. I teach the drawing of this exact project over my drawing channel. If you click the I in the little top corner of your screen, I forget which side it is, you can actually go there first and learn how to draw it and then meet me back here and we will watercolor her together. Oh no, I completely forgot her fairy ears. What? All right, well, emergency fairy ear add-on session. Oh no, don't tell my drawers. They're gonna be like, dumb ears, what the heck? All right, so shooting up from her draw line. We're just gonna add a little, you know, ear there. And then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna extendo that jaw line. And then somewhere in here, we're gonna have this one peeking out. It's fine if they're not exact. Oh, that really is not the same, is it? <laughs> Whatever. Maybe fairies can like, like uh, change their ear directionality. This does not want to race today. So I'm just going to go with that. All right. Woo. What's a, look at how ridiculous that is. <laughs> it don't look anything alike. Oh no. All right. Well, you know what else I'm going to do that I didn't draw? Don't tell my drawing channel people. No, they're gonna miss out if they don't come over here. I forgot all these little leaves. She's got leaves. She's a forest fae. And by the way, she's evil. So yes, that expression on her face is legit what she's thinking. She does want to lure you back to the fairy realm, make you eat sweets, and have you um, be stuck in there forever. That's literally what fairies do. They're not so nice. So I am going to be, first of all, I'm working in a hardcover Strathmore watercolor journal that's filled with watercolor paper, cold press. So it's got a nice texture to it. It's super absorbent. I have been waiting to bust these puppies out forever. So um, I'm so excited. So, so Derwin's like one of the best brands in the world. They're just the bomb. Um, I have not opened these yet. Oh, it's weird. Look, it's like they're set. I was like, oh, the other side will be brighter. Froomp, and they're not. They're also very muted. So I have uh, I have graphitant colored pencils. <laughs> I've had them for maybe four years. Never opened those either. I just don't really love colored pencils so much. So I'm going to ditch this because I'm going in with my Polina Bright paintbrushes because I'm obsessed with her, her art and her watercolor brushes and I'm not sorry and there's like basically graphitin is um well I'll just read you right from the package they're a unique blend of graphite paint with color for dramatic tonal work Ooh, look at that puppy I just think that these were tailor-made paints for things like evil fairies so I've long admired people's work this is the autumn brown who use graphitin and this is why I bothered purchasing, the, purchasing them was that it it seems to, at least on the outside looking in, it looks like this kind of nature tones because they're all very muted. And I thought, ooh, for things like, you know, fairies are like of and from nature. So I thought it would be perfect for today's lesson. So that's the, that's the autumn brown. Ooh, the russets. I'm going to swatch these kind of quickly just so you can see them too. And then I'm going to apply them to my fairy that I just drew over my drawing channel. Look at this meadow. Oh, it's like green. Weird. And they're very, they have like chunks in them, which is like granulating watercolors. I just did a water, I just did a video on what the heck granulating watercolors are. Basically, I'll wrap that video up in a sentence. It's basically when the large, mineral chunks of color separate. It's like the pigment can come in large chunks or it can be ground so fine that that's when you have those really bold watercolors. You don't even have to be bold, but watercolors that you never get this sort of separation. You can literally see the chunks of pigment. Like it's not subtle. So these have that too, which I personally really like. Not for every project, but when I want it, I want like a ton of it. 
And when I don't want it, I want nothing. So um, that's why I like Daniel Smith watercolors so much because he has a really broad range of both granulating and non-granulating. So these are granulating, but they look, they kind of look dirty. Not in a bad way. I'm not saying that as a negative, but they look like dirty watercolors. And that's because the graphite is like gray mooshing in with all of the, what, what would otherwise be probably a very beautiful, non-granulating um, color, vibrant color. But yeah, these are all muted. So perfect for today's. So that was ocean blue. This one was slate green, which actually looks, um, it looks really like a gray green. It almost looks like Jane Gray, if you're familiar with Daniel Smith. That just looks gray. And that is supposed to, well, that is called green gray. It doesn't look green in any way, shape, or form. This is the meadow. That's russet and that's autumn brown. And then there's just one little row below it. I'll go in order this time. I really screwed myself up because I went out of order. So the graphite gray looks really similar to the green gray. By the way, that little sound is my water my water bucket. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this color. This is port, which looks like a, kind of like a gray mauve almost. Juniper. Oh, that's lovely. That is a real lovely, that reminds me of a uh, lunar violet. Daniel Smith, can you tell I'm a Daniel Smith fan? I know every color by heart. <laughs> this looks also a bit like that. That is aubergine. So a little bit more, this has a little bit more pink in it. This almost reminds me of Moon Glow, and that is more like Lunar Violet. So Aubergine and Juniper. I'm loving this bottom row. Dark Indigo is here. Also love that. That reminds me of Indian Throne Blue. And then the last one is Steel Blue, which looks exactly like that one above it. <laughs> so there's a little bit of, um, it is blue, but there's almost a little bit of green in there as well. All right, so that's super cool. So um, so this russet to me is kind of like, reminds me of a skin color. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use only these colors to um, color her in. So russet. Oh, and by the way, this technique, in case you missed my other, um, in case you missed my other video, you really should go watch it though, is, is when you do a graphite drawing, like to completion, like you basically finish it up and then you go back in and you just do a light wash of watercolor. So it's very, I was going to say quick and dirty. It's literally dirty. <laughs> So you're adding color, but again, on top of things, something that's really complete in and of itself, even though its ears are really wonky. Okay, so I'm gonna start with, I need some like paper towels just in case. How about regular towels? Sure. So I'm gonna take this, uh, what did I say? I think it was russet. Is it going in that order? I went out of orders. Now it's all screwed me up. Oh, I went that way. Yes, it is russet. So it's not really a skin color, but that's okay. And I'm, I'm just going to sweep like messily this color just right in with this is just the wetness with my Polina Bright uh, Zero size brush. And I love her so much. I use, I'm obsessed with her. She actually gave me my very own link and the coupon code for you guys if you want to buy her brushes. I can save you 10% off her entire order. Your entire order, sorry. Cause she's amazing. Look her on, on Instagram, seriously. You'll not be sorry. All right, so you see how I'm just like running this over? over my drawing and I'm keeping I'm just keeping the white of the paper where I don't want any colors which isn't really in many places but isn't that cool 
it's like a such a little bit goes such a long way. I'm so happy to find, you have no idea how long I've had this set. And I've just been, it's been staring at me like, today's the day. And I'm like, I don't have time. Okay. So that's badass, right? Am I right? Is it okay that I'm loving my own work this much? She just looks so badass. All right. Now we're going to do a different color. All right. So skin done. Moving on to the next awesome part. Okay. I really like this. What the heck is this? Autumn Brown, it's the first one. I'm, I like, I would like to see it um, accentuate. So a lot of, I see a lot of watercolorists and they do the nose like red and I think it looks so cool. And then they leave a little highlight on the top. We can put it in if it doesn't, if it's, if mine is too shaded. But it's like this little pink nose and it adds a lot of dimension. And I'm gonna use that same autumn brown to go kind of around the eyes. That's too much. <laughs> that is too much. Go around the eyes to again kind of accentuate her evilness. Because don't she is a little evil. Don't let her lure you. She will lure you. Fairies do not mess around. So I also love this approach because you can be super messy and not precious because your, your drawing is already covered in, it's already covered up in all this graphite. So who cares if you add like a little tinge of color. So there's our little lip, same color. I'm a very messy watercolorist as all my students are like, ha ha ha, Karen, you're messy with literally everything. I know, I know, I really am. <laughs> and I'm not sorry, but that's the cool thing about art. You can be OCD and be an artist and you can be a total slob and be an artist. And like, there's room for everyone. How awesome is that? It's not a lot of things in life that like all personality attributes get to play in their own way and everyone gets to be successful. Love it. All right, just popping that in elsewhere. Oh my God, it's so good. I'm loving her evilness. She's so evil. Same thing, just russet. Just getting carried away because I'm loving the red. Oh, that's a little, that's a bit much. That might be too much. So then I just take my water and then you can use it like a sponge and like just get rid of it. You're just swishing it around. Spread it somewhere else. You're like, get out of here, red. That's too much. What are you doing? Ugh. Pesty red. Just go place it somewhere else. Ooh. It's good with like the red eyes a little bit too. It's a little freaky. All right. Now we got that taken care of. Let's do some hair. All right. So with the hair, don't forget, we're going to keep, oh, maybe you wouldn't do the drawing part. Oh my God, go do the drawing part. So we're keeping a highlight. So like this, we're going to keep and this we're gonna keep, okay? Everything else we can do our messy, our messy watercolor. Okay, well, everyone else will be neat and I'll just be the only messy one. Let's just be honest. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm gonna do the leaves before or after. Mm, I'll do them after. I'm gonna switch to a larger brush because hair it doesn't have to take so long if you, you use a larger brush, let's just be honest. Um, I'm going to use meadow, although really we can do anything we want. Um, let's see. Let me look at my palette of colors. Yeah, I kind of do like that meadowy. Um, yeah, and then maybe we can do a dark background. Let's do it. Okay, meadow, here we go. And I hate yellow, but also she's an evil fairy, so I feel like it's appropriate. So I'm just putting a nice big old swath starting at the top, skipping past that part because remember highlights going right in with my brush. Okay. Oops. Don't color in the leaves. And then I'm going to switch from the bottom and go up, bottom up, bottom up and top down. Now I'm going to just wet my brush and then I'm going to like pull some of this down. So you can have a highlight, but it's also cool to still kind of like, 
depict the hair a little bit. And you can do that by just like pulling some strands through or what it really is is smearing the paint through. And then I'm gonna make our bangs be able to have a little bit more definition. Like here, here and there. Floop, let's go flop over to the other side and repeat. So I'm just putting my brush right on in. It's gonna be super dark and juicy because I have a ton of paint and a ton of water on my brush. Okay. Same thing. I'm only going so far because I want to I want to preserve uh, this area for the highlights. So then I'm going to dip again and I'm going to go bottom up, bottom up and stop so we get keep the highlighted area. Bottom up, bottom up. Zoop, zoop. Isn't this the most satisfying watercoloring of your life? Don't deny it, it is, we know it is. Oh my gosh, look at that, do, do, do. And then we just go there. Now the ear, the darn ear is in the way, so we do have to kind of like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Kind of butt in a little bit for some, and then, but see how there's still like a swath there and a still. See, I think I, I should have just let that go. I like that side better than the last side, but that's cool. We don't wanna sit here and only point out the negatives. I think I'm gonna, I was thinking about this today. I was like, I think that whenever somebody, so I have a big Facebook group and a lot of people go out of their way to point out when they're posting like the one thing that they hate about their drawing. And I think when people do that, I'm gonna make them, make them say, go back and tell me one good thing they like about their drawing. Cause I'm sure that there is, like I guarantee you that they can find some, just to break the habit because I don't like it when people are negative about themselves. It makes me sad. All right, she is so cool. Let's give her some eyes. I'm gonna give her um, the slate. Oh no, the slate green doesn't look anything like the slate green though. I'll do the dark indigo. Although frankly, the aubergine would be creepier. Let's do that because she is evil after all. All right, here's the evil. Um, I actually have so much on my brush. I think that's too much water. It's too much everything. It's just too much. Too much in general. Okay, just a little bit of purple goes a long way for our evil friend. And then we need to color in these leaves. But now there's no real green. That's the only thing I'm struggling with here is there's no green. Um. It's like the ocean blue is kind of, all right, well maybe, I'll, oh my God, am I gonna have to mix a color? My students know I am not a mixer. I'm like too lazy to mix. Fine, fine, I'll mix. So annoying. I'm like the only professional artist on the planet who refuses to mix colors. <laughs> it's really ridiculous. I know, I know. All right, we got some green. Look at me, I'm such a big girl, I mixed a color. All right, oh, look. Look at our awesome leaves. That looks kick ass. All right, look at our little green. Sloppy works. And also not sloppy also works. She is so cool. All right, now I'm going to have a super, I'm gonna have a party on my paper for a minute. So I'm gonna take I think I really love, I think this juniper color, which is right here. And I'm going to have like a juniper party all like around her, just as a grand finale. Okay, ready? Just taking a big Polina Bright brush. This is actually size two. She actually has one that's bigger, but the pans are so small. I don't think it would even go in there. So if you want it to be a dark color, use less water than I'm using. Like this side is darker than that because I use more water over there. And then if you want it lighter, just add more water to your brush. But the reason I love these brushes is that they're super juicy and they're super absorbent and they're vegan. Basically like a quadruple win. All right, so we just get all this. Ooh, we should have made her eyes the same color as the background. All 
crying. Here we go. So I do think that this palette, the Graphitint, works awesome for projects like this. This is literally why I do it, because I do so many in the Art Celtic Collective group. We do a lot of really fun, um, not creepy projects, just like, pro just mm, kind of creepy projects. <laughs> like, we just do a lot of things having to do with nature and creatures, and a lot of that just comes from nature, or nature kind of gone wrong, I guess. And so it lends itself well. But you can see how it's granulating up at the top here. I'll, sh I'll zoom in so you can see that. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer. You know the next move I'm gonna make, right, people? So I can leave it. There's a few options what we can do to finish this off. Let me just start a new camera. All right, so this wouldn't really be the best mixed media piece if I didn't include more than just two mediums. We gotta go for at least three to say this was a mixed media project. So I just dried this all with my hair dryer. So we have a couple choice. We have, well, it's mixed media. Let's be honest. We have about a hundred ways we could finish this off. <laughs> um, so things that come to my mind that I wouldn't mind doing would be to one would be to like do some more with my graphite pencil. Okay, I could just come in here and like um, like strengthen up any lines that maybe got lost or whatnot by the, all the watercolors. Um, the, my other favorite thing to do is to go in with um, like a little brush pen. Now I'm obsessed with a Pentel pocket brush pen. That's what I use in 100% of the time, let's be honest. But I found recently this little sister product, which I am now also equally obsessed with. This is the brush sign pen. Artiste, which is also by Pentel, and it's basically just a little baby tiny version. Um, I also bought this in, it's, it comes in a ton of colors, what? So I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that. I already bought them. It's a problem, but the black, I'm sure I'm gonna use most of the time. So because I thought this is the perfect, because I don't want, so the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen is like, can be very overwhelming because it's so much. And like this is, because it is such a muted palette, I don't really want to overtake the entire project with black lines. Although like normally that is totally my way and I would absolutely do that. Um, but I just started using this and I just <laughs> love it. So it's just daintier. And it's especially good for those of you who have been hanging out with me for a long time who have maybe tried the Pocket Pentel brush pen or were like, hell no, like this is way too much and too scary. This is like a much less scary alternative. But can you see how powerful that little outline can be? Like, boom, her eye just went from like creepy to like, holy crap. So that's that little double line is taking away from it a little bit, but that's kind of can be the power of just like a little outlining. Like you don't have to get psycholy carried away that I normally do. I do this cause I just, it's like my way of doodling. Um, but yeah, it can really make a powerful impact. And it's, this one is not as hard to use. I don't, I don't find as the Pentel pocket brush pen that I normally am busting out because it's um, it's just so much finer and so you don't have to worry about varying your pressure as much. So it's kind of awesome. So I'm not doing every single outline. I'm just gonna pick, like pick and choose a couple places, I think. I think that makes her extra sinister when you like make those little, she's literally scaring me. When you make the little upturns of the mouth, like so creepy. So yeah, I'm just gonna do like a touch here and there and then call it a day. Can even do like our le her leaves. I'm so glad I remember the leaves. They make a really big difference actually. But can you see just pulling out those few lines and outlining them, that really does make, a different, make an impact. All right, so yeah, I can't wait to have the other demo coming for you. This was so much fun. I really needed like 
art is such a stress reliever and I have been so stressed and I could not wait to get to my art table today to do this with you because I really just needed a really fun play session. I do. I feel so much better. I want to like keep going all day because I'm like, oh, that really worked. It made me feel so good. So thank you for hanging out with me today. Subscribe. Click the like button. I never tell, ask anybody to do that. Share this with a friend. And uh, if you do like fairies or like if you learned something today, this is actually fairy number 10 of 10 that I did over on my drawing YouTube channel. So go check this one out, the drawing version and the other ones. And subscribe when you're over there too. What the heck? And I will do you a favor and I will put the link to the playlist right here. If you click that, it'll take you right over to my other channel and all 10 lessons. Thank you so much. Bye.